This is the basketball show. What they gonna say next? Yes, thank you to TCL, 2K and News Corp. We're back for another episode of The Basketball Show. I'm Joe Healy. This, of course, is Shane Heal. Hammer, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very well. A bit run down, a bit tired. Busy big weekend. weekend. Big weekend. Lots of basketball. We love that. Coming to the pointy end of the season. Yeah. NBL and It's getting NBA. exciting. Bring it on. Let's start with the Hall of Fame. The 2020 oh, class was inducted. The headline names, of course, Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan. It was an emotional ceremony at times, obviously remembering Kobe, but it yeah. was also a great celebration of, of some incredible careers. You had the the honour of playing alongside and against these guys in their prime. Talk yep. me through some of the memories that you've got, starting with, say, Timmy D. Uh, well, I was there for five minutes, let's be honest. So, <laughs> um, But I had the opportunity to be able to sit beside him and go to dinner and be a teammate for a, a short period of time. And uh, he was incredible. One of the probably the most down-to-earth superstars. And I remember the um, first video session we did, Pop came in and he absolutely just tore shreds off Tim Duncan from a pre-season game. And Tim's like, yep, okay, coach, I'll do better. But no one else you are you actually copping that from. I reckon that um, Pop used to set it up and because everyone else is sitting there going, oh, jeez, <laughs> he could say anything and you just accept it. But that was the culture of, of Tim Duncan, superstar. He spoke really well about Pop at the ceremony as yeah. well. It was lovely to see. Um, what about Garnett? Well, I was uh, a rookie in Minnesota and KG was only 19 years of age, signed for $126 million for six years back in the 90s. Unbelievable, but uh, seven foot talent and uh, he was way different than Tim Duncan. Good guy. I, I liked him. Really passionate and outgoing and had his posse of, of people that he went to high school with that lived with him and traveled around with him, but uh, a lot of fun, a lot of energy, really, and just obviously a superstar. And what about Kobe? I believe you made it on one of his highlight reels. I think that's my claim to fame with <laughs> Kobe, is that he blocked me at the forum one day and uh, he blocked me, followed it up, and then um, dunked it at the other end. I think it was number 10. So uh, have you been, are you in number 10? Uh, top 10? Absolutely not. In the NBA? No. Oh, I was, it wasn't pretty, but <laughs> something laughing. Yeah, well, amazing uh, careers and wonderful to remember Kobe as well. Vanessa spoke incredibly. The yeah. strength that she has was just outstanding. Um, since then, it's also been announced that Lauren Jackson will be inducted as part of the 2021 class. Yep. She's obviously just Australia's greatest three-time WNBA MVP, two-time yep. champion. Incredible. Finals MVP, four Olympics, rah, rah, rah. A whole lot. She yeah. sort of started it all, didn't she, for, yep. for women over there and set the tone. Well, I, I remember maybe, watching maybe her. Maybe Michelle Timms before that. I think she's yeah. in the FIBA Hall of Fame, Timsy. Well done, Timsy. Shout out to Timsy. Yeah, definitely always. We love yeah. her on yeah. this show. Of course you do. <laughs> All right, let's get into our TCL starting five. It has just been announced that Josh Giddy has been relieved of his duties with the 36ers. Shock. <laughs> I'm shocked. Everyone wanted to shoot us down, said, no, nah, he's going to play <laughs> this season. It was always going to happen once the 36ers were unable to make the finals. He's been a little off the last couple of games as well. Went two, two games too long. Hasn't played well the last couple of games. So many things on his mind. Only a teenager yeah, exactly. going through this. And it's just been incredible. We love him. We know he's going to have a great career. But now it's time for him to get in the lab. He's got to go work on his jump shot. He needs a sprint coach. He needs to be able to get quicker and quicker. Playing against athletes over there. Uh, and strength and conditioning program as well for him. And, and when you're with the team and you're playing and you're training and videos and all the rest of it about the team, you don't get a chance to be able to put the time in to actually get your body right and solely focus on these details. So that's what he needs to be able to do now. He get a great run at it and prepare for the Olympics as well. Hopefully he makes that Olympic team and uh, he's going to be a star. Yeah, if he uh, makes the Olympic team, he'll be... Midway through the tournament for the draft as well, which would be pretty yeah, exciting for him. I will have a celebration for you, young fella. Oh, absolutely. We'll be having a couple of drinks on, him. on his Maybe we'll bar. catch up with King Was. <laughs> have a celebration. Yeah, that would be great. Um, let's keep things moving. The Sydney Kings and Adam Ford have parted ways now for next season. He obviously still has a job to do with the Kings. But is this a surprise to you? Given the fact that we've been talking about this coaching merry-go-round that seemingly has been shut down, but behind the scenes oh, is going I was, ahead. I was surprised when they named him coach. Mm -hmm. And now I'm surprised that 
he's not continuing on based on he's only been, he's been great only based on what we're seeing of their performances you don't know i don't know anything behind the scenes or from players or management or anything else but based on what you see he's done a pretty good job he's a been great excellent job. he's been great even the i was at their game against the 36ers over the weekend even the staff that i'm working with mm. the crew the camera crew they're all sort of saying that they're going to miss him he's been great to work with he's always yeah. up for a chat um, and obviously as, as... But obviously they don't believe that he's the right person to take the Kings further. And you get one season to sort of work things out and work out whether it's a good fit for both parties. And for whatever reason, it's just not. So we wish him luck. I'm sure something good will be around the corner for him. Let's hope so. South East Melbourne got the better of Melbourne United in a massive upset over the weekend. Keeper Sykes went berserk, 26 points at a crucial time. Mitch Creek was pushing triple-double numbers as well. Yep. Did that result, I guess, not surprise you? It but did surprise it, me. It did? Okay. It did. Well, they haven't been playing great basketball. And Mitch Creek has been a shadow of him, his former self. And uh, he, he was the alpha dog on that team. You saw That's him. when he's the, at his best, though, when he's sort of... Yeah, but he hasn't been that. Yeah. And then I think Sykes coming in, he was exactly that. You could see he was a bit chippy to the opposition. It's like, yep, come with me, fellas. And it was almost like that motivated Creek. He was happy to jump on his back, but he hasn't been that person leading from the front, keeping people accountable. And they need somebody that's pretty hard, single-minded, doesn't care about anything else, just going to try and make things happen. And if Sykes back, if he's playing like that, gives them a chance to totally change the way they play. We know they've got the talent but they haven't been performing and uh, maybe this is the start. They're the only team outside the top two that can seriously compete talent-wise to win a series. I'm, I'm not sure they if, will. If they can bring the synergy, I think Isaiah Liafa and Ryan Brokoff had nine points between them, so there's still a lot of scoring power there to come as well. Yeah, I mean, and and Brokoff's not ready. He's had injuries and it's been disrupted and, you know, Glidden's up and down. They need consistency if they're going to beat one of those other two teams and, in the series. Well, what did you make of Melbourne United's performance? Because their, their three top guns actually performed quite well. It was sort of just the role players. When you hear the stats of teams that have beaten Perth in Perth and then come back and then lost the next game, it was like the last seven teams that have beaten Perth over there have all then lost the next game. And, you know, you fly back and you see They have control over the competition even when they're not on the court. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they... they They've got all the talent in the world, but it's mind games for them. They were a different team. They were a different beast in Perth. You see, right from the start, they were ready to go from day dot and uh, made things happen. They were proactive. They weren't like that against Bit Southeast of complacency, Melbourne. maybe? A little bit. Travel, whatever. They're on top. You know, no excuses. They need to be better, but I think that's what happened. And it's credit to Southeast Melbourne. They actually came and they went and took the win. The, you know, Melbourne United were never going to give you a win. Phoenix had to go take it, and they did. Uh, Brisbane legend Robert Sibley had his number 52 singlet retired over the weekends. Great scenes up there at Nissan Arena. Talk me through some of your memories of him on the court. Yep, the bandit. He's one of my favourite teammates of all time. We roomed together for four or five years uh, on the road. And uh, the best intro, Neil Hamilton Smith uh, used to intro. I mean, he used to say, number 52, the baseline bandit, Rocky Robert Sibley. It was the best intro. I loved it. 13,000 people at Boondle and everyone got into it. But he's a character. You know, he's had some tough times, uh, health problems that he's gone through. I spoke to him again today. and uh, But he is one of the most positive guys that you'll ever come across. Fun guys as a teammate. And, uh, and we love him so Congrats to Sibs and well done to the Brisbane Bullets too for putting that on. They might have announced it a little bit late, probably should have done a little bit beforehand, but uh, so many old school Bullets fans went to be able to uh, to see the Bandit. Yeah, it was awesome. Great to see some, some old faces there as well. Let's move to the WNBA, something that we've now got a, a, even more of a vested interest in with Shy being over there. Yep, we've got seven Australians. Um, how good's that? It's so great. Congrats to all of them and good luck to all of them. And yeah, Shy arrived there a couple of days ago. So she's going to be a little bit behind the eight ball because she hasn't played for six months and no pre season camp. But she's had a jab and um, got her apartment and a car and making friends. And the girls were on the road to start with, but uh, starting to, to settle in. So she'll be looking forward to suiting up for their first home game. So I'm not sure how much she'll play because she hasn't done anything, but we'll wait and see. Oh, it's super exciting anyway. And it feels like the WNBA, there's been a real 
positive buzz around it. The yeah. NBA players getting involved and really pushing women's yep. basketball as well. And some insane play as well. Do you see Sabrina's uh, yeah. cold game, the buzzer? It was, it was great. Great stats. Um, with her getting injured last year, we know she's a superstar. She would have been so hungry to have a big game in that first game, and she did. She came through. So it's going to be really exciting. I know I got my league pass and uh, ready to go. All right, we're going to talk NBL One now. It's been a great competition, Hammer, so far. Some brilliant performances, really well received. But we're hearing reports that some of the players have been abused, copped death threats even on social media. I know Pete Hawley uh, put up a tweet that just said it's ridiculous that some of these young players are receiving this kind of attention. Yeah. It's, it just feels like such a cop-out. Keyboard warriors. Disgraceful. But it's been mm. going on forever. This isn't just about basketball. Yep. It's been brought to light. And I've spoken about it on many, many occasions about Twitter need to make people verify their accounts. In anywhere in society, you can't walk into the workplace and just abuse somebody. Uh, and the bullying that's going on, the, the, the mental uh, torment that people have to go through. And as soon as you make people verify their account, they're not so tough anymore because they can be kept accountable. And, uh, you know, it's just in, in life. And it's sad that it comes in the sport mm. when, especially if people are abusive because they've bet on a game or something like that and they're lashing out to some of these players. And that happens across all the codes. And the only way to stop it is by keeping them accountable. It tends to happen with the lower um, level at different sports, though. I feel like the NBL almost has a responsibility to come in and help out with the integrity just to try and protect their players, I've got absolutely no idea how well, on earth they do that. But it can't unless, you know, Twitter and some of these other social media platforms actually start keeping people accountable. And you can't do that if you're hiding behind an egg and people have got five accounts and abusing people and everything else. It's just wrong. It just well, can't it's, happen. It's, it's all money, isn't it? It's, it's, it's your Twitters, it's your Facebooks and all that having... As you mentioned before, people with five accounts, which makes their numbers look better, as you were saying, um, in which case increases their popularity, it increases their revenue from advertising and all that yep. sort of thing. I just don't know. I don't know how. Well, you, you just got to draw a line in the sand because you just got to align it with the rest of society and all the rules and regulations that we all have to abide by. Social media is one thing that you don't have to. You just have the right to be able to abuse people and be so personal and degrading. And with the, the amount of mental health problems that we have, it's amazing that there's not more of a movement to be able to stop it. And, you know, whenever I put this out on social media, people talk about the rights for people to be anonymous and everything else. Well, you got rights but, to treat people with respect and if you don't yeah. then how's the rights for the people getting abused that's what it comes down to and if you don't Absolutely. do the wrong thing then you don't get any penalties i wish that i can see it being changed i can't i, no. I just think that well, these companies it, are far too big and far too powerful um but it's such a shame that it is happening shout out to block, pete for block. to pete for calling it out and hopefully we can just create a bit of momentum have people talking about it and yep. try and do Just our block bit to... people and you don't ever hear it about it again. Done. Yeah. I've got a long list of blocks. My kids <laughs> laugh at it. Yeah, block, <laughs> gone, don't want to hear from you. Funny, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, it's time to go in-depth now, thanks to 2K. We have the matchups for the NBA's play-in tournament. We'll bring in former NBL MVP Derek Rucker as we do every week. Derek, hello to you. We'll start with the East. It's the number seven Celtics up against the number eight Wizards. Derek, who do you see winning that one? This is a tough one. I've got bad news for Celtics fans. Russell Westbrook is going to be too much for them, Hammer. And Bradley Beal's playing outstanding, the number two scorer in the NBA this season. I've got the Wizards advancing. I think the Celtics are going to have to go and win that second game to get themselves into the, into the legitimate playoffs. And I agree with you. The, the Celtics have been putrid. I know they've had some you know, injury problems and whatever else, but they've got enough talent to be a lot higher 
than seventh on the ladder. And uh, I agree with you. Washington, they're a high-scoring team led by Westbrook, but Bradley Beal, I mean, he's a superstar as well. And that combination right now, they've got belief. It's almost like they're just trying to prove everybody else wrong, taking momentum, and I think they win that game convincingly. All right, so, so you guys have got the Celtics playing in the second game, which will be the winner of the Pacers and Hornets. Hammer, can you see a young Charlotte side upsetting Indiana here? No, well, we've spoken about the fact that Indiana have got their own problems, but they're going to be too good for uh, Charlotte. And, uh, and I actually think that they could, if they get themselves together, beat Boston as well, just because of how, Boston, how bad Boston have been. So I think that one's going to be the close one to see who rounds out the top eight. And uh, So I'm going to go for Washington and Indiana to be able to get through. I've got Charlotte. I think Charlotte are going to cause an upset here. I haven't loved the way Indiana's looked the past month of the season. I think LaMelo Ball is going to rise to the occasion. Charlotte's a dangerous team, and I think they will go into that next round, play the Celtics, and then their season will be over. The Celtics will take the number eight seed in the playoffs. All right, I'm jotting this down so I can pull you both up after the play-in tournament and tell you which one of you was wrong because there's nothing more satisfying. Let's go well, to the on. West. How, how about we pull up LeBron for not even wanting this play-in <laughs> series to even happen? He's kidding himself, isn't he? <laughs> hey, he didn't bring it up until he actually had to play in it because he sat out half the season and if now he doesn't want it. This is it, a great initiative. If it wasn't for the play-in tournament, though, as Director Dave pointed out to you before, he would already be in the playoffs. So no wonder he doesn't want to have to go and play oh. this game. And it is against Steph Curry in a one-off game. That is a real concern for the Lakers, don't you think? Well, it's not a one-off game because they still get a second chance if they lose that game. But if you're not good it's enough to beat... It's a one-off game. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a one-off game. It's pride. One-off. No, because if they lose that one game, then they get a chance to be able to play two teams that didn't even make the top eight. If you can't beat, win one game of those two, I've got news for you, LeBron. You don't deserve to be in the top ten. Out. Hey, I don't know where you've been the past seven or eight years, but there's history between the Warriors and LeBron. There's history between Steph and LeBron. This is a pride match, Shane. Whoever wins this, it's it's like a mini championship. Can you imagine if the Warriors knock off the Lakers and the Lakers have to go play another game against Memphis or San Antonio? How beneath is that, how beneath LeBron James is that to be playing for the eighth seed? Well, how, how's it beneath him? That's where they finished. If you finish at that spot, then that's what you, the cards that you dealt, you need to go get it done. And I agree that it's going to be a great game because in the sort of form that Steph Curry's in, they could beat anyone on any particular night. I just think with the pride that LeBron's got, it's just not going to happen. He's going to will himself and his teammates to be able to get that win. They'll move through. And then uh, the other one will be more interesting, Memphis and Spurs. It doesn't matter who wins that game. No one cares. They're not going to do anything. Both those teams aren't up to it. And Golden State will go through. Derek, what do you think? Oh, his whole thing there is based on a fallacy. The Lakers are not beating Golden State. Golden State is going to win that game. The Lakers are going to go off and knock out whoever is in that other thing. That's the least interesting part of the whole play and is Memphis and San Antonio. Yep. No one cares. Terrible. Golden State or or L.A., but in my, in my mind, L.A. is going to knock off that team and be number eight. And then we are going to have one of the most interesting playoffs uh, series we've seen in years, Shane. It's going to be fantastic. The play-in is a great concept. I thought it was a bit confusing at first, but now once everyone gets used to it, it's going to be fantastic for years to come. And for the first time, we haven't really seen anyone that's a standout in either the West or the East where you can say, yep, they're definitely going to be able to win that. It just depends on who wins the other side, on the other side of the country. It's really, really easy mm -hmm. to be able to make compelling arguments for a whole lot of teams uh, that are going to be playing in these playoffs. And I think it is one of the most interesting set of playoff series that we've seen in a long, long time. Well, it's super exciting. The Nets were incredible today, some of the plays that they came up with. And shout out again to Director Dave. Yes, your Knicks finished fourth, we know. Thank you for reminding us. We look forward to seeing them in the playoffs. d -Ruck, thank you for joining us again this week. We'll chat to you next week. Yeah, it feels like both the NBA and NBL seasons are ramping up at the moment. I am just happy that Miami are back in the playoffs. How good are Miami? They stumbled a little bit at the start of the season. They did coming this last off, year, though. Coming off the... Yeah, exactly. They came good at the end of the year, took mm -hmm. momentum. Jimmy Butler fired up. 
Love it. And it's going to be great final series. Can't wait. Yes, it's going to be awesome. That's all we've got time for. Thank you to TCL, 2K and News Top five. Corp. Well, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Dan Shamir, <laughs> number yeah. one play. That was That's why he wears white shoes. He disagreed with the play and he sprinted the sideline it's really, past the bench it's really out the, into the locker room. That the only reason. It was so bizarre. It was so Number bizarre. one play of the week. You're not seeing Dean Vickerman or Brian Gorgian running at that sort of pace. That was Gorge, that was a Gorge, record Gorge sprint. Gorge could in those uh, sneakers though. The, oh, red, the ones, red ones, the, the Ferraris. Rockets. Oh, the Rockets <laughs> can go. All right, here number is, one play. Here is our top. stay tuned for it. It is not our number one play. We'll see what? you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Colton Iverson gets us going at number five this week. When the big man is in full flight, no one is getting in his way. Instruction. Iverson, strong to the cup. Beautiful find. Oh, McDowell White. He's pocket pass and big fella. Big finish. Next up, it's the end to end play by Nathan Sobey, picking the pass and finishing at the rim. Where's pass stolen by Sobey? In for the jam. Yeah, Sobey turned the ball over. That is going to the races. And number three is the Hawks' defence to hold off the breakers as Justin Simon came up with the steal to seal it. Five seconds left. Webster lost it. Simon with the steal. Huge defensive play from Justin Simon. It's going to get the Hawks there. Mitch McCarron and Jock Landale are next. From the look away dime to the strong finish, it was clear they were loving every minute of their win over the defending champs. Nice pass, McCarron. Landale scores. What a pass. Mitch and one play. Big, strong finish from Landale, and you know it means a lot to him too. The Phoenix brought them back down to earth, though. At number one, it's Keeper Sykes, who had the Midas touch as they upset their crosstown rivals. He's been able to go to work all night. He's going to have to do it again. Goes to the beautiful little oh. double team and just felt like he kissed it off the roof with the finger roll, and it's now back to a 30-point lead. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.